the new version of Home Assistant was released today on the 1st of June 2022. It's got some great improvements to the energy dashboard that allows you to compare your energy usage between two different time periods. The team has also improved the logbook feature to make it snappier and show more information. In fact, they love the logbook enhancements so much that they just decided to put logbooks everywhere, on the device page, in areas, all over the place. If you're new to the world of Home Assistant, you may not know that a new version gets released on the first Wednesday of every month, and that the versions are named by the year and month in which they're released. So today, we're getting access to the 2022.6 release, which is the June 2022 version, because June is the sixth month. Let's take a deeper look at what's new. Actually, before we dive further into the release itself, I want to call out a few events that the Home Assistant team has coming up. Firstly, the team's running a live stream workshop about a new smart home standard called Matter, which is scheduled to come out in the autumn of this year. Or the spring, depending on which side of the planet you live on. On the 15th of June, the folks at Nabucasa, the company that funds a lot of the development into Home Assistant, are running a workshop to explain what Matter is and how you can use it with Home Assistant. The very next day, on the 16th of June, the ESP Home team will be doing a live stream to show off some of the smart home open audio they've been working on. Both of these are going to be live streams on YouTube, so go visit the links that I've put in the description below and click on the set reminder button so you don't miss them. I'm really looking forward to both of these, but we're here to talk about the latest Home Assistant release, so let's get back to that. Sometime last year, Home Assistant released a major update to allow people to measure how much electricity they were using in their homes. Since then, this feature has been enhanced dramatically to support other energy types and measure the generation of energy as well as the consumption. This is a really kick-ass feature that gives you detailed insight into how you're using energy and how you're contributing to the CO2 production and all the devastating environmental impacts that come along with that. The idea is that if you know exactly where, when, and how much energy you're using, then you can make smarter choices that ultimately reduce your carbon footprint and help you save money. One drawback with the energy dashboard was that it was really difficult to compare how much energy you're using today with what you were using yesterday, last week, or last year. And if you can't compare energy usage between two periods, then how do you know if you're using less of it? Well now, as of this release, you can compare your home energy data against previous periods directly from the dashboard. New buttons have been added to the top of the dashboard that let you visually see in the graphs the current energy usage in darker colors, compared with the previous period you've selected in a transparent set of colors. I'll be creating a video series all about energy monitoring later this year. So if that's something you want to learn more about, then I strongly encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you can see when that's released. The next major part of this update is improvements to the logbooks. The logbook has been part of Home Assistant for ages and shows you a list of things that have happened for a certain set of entities over a period of time. As an example, here I have a logbook card on one of my Lovelace dashboards, which lists all the time my exterior doors and windows have been opened or closed. Well, the back end that powers these logbooks has been improved, and they now work much smoother and respond far faster. They now quickly update, in real time, any events that are happening to the entities that you've chosen to look at. These logbooks now support device events too, which is something that you never used to see in the logbooks. These are things like the Philips Hue dimmer button presses, or the actions that were sent from this Akara Magic Cube. It used to be really hard to figure out how these devices worked in order to create automations around them, but these logbook enhancements will show you each and every event that gets sent from one of these devices in real time. The logbooks have now also been added into some really useful places, like the Home Assistant area and device pages. When you visit one of these pages now, you'll see a new logbook card, which will show you all the events that have been recorded for that particular device, or for all devices assigned to that particular area. This is gonna be great for troubleshooting devices, or just remotely spying on what your kids are up to in their bedrooms. This release also brings a new way to add OAuth 2 credentials that are needed to access third-party services like Spotify, Xbox, and Google Calendar. OAuth 2 is great because it lets one system, like Home Assistant, interact with another system, like Spotify, as you, without you having to give up your username and password to either of these services. The problem with OAuth in Home Assistant, though, is that it was a massive pain in the ass to set up. You had to, in some cases, create developer accounts with these services, then an application so that you could get a client ID in secret that you then pasted into your configuration.yaml file. As of this release, you can add all of these credentials directly through the UI, and some integrations will actually guide you through this whole process when you install them. 
but one of the biggest improvements for me is the fact that the My Home Assistant function now allows you to create your own redirect URLs secured by a valid TLS certificate that sends the OAuth flow directly back to your local Home Assistant installation. If you don't understand a word of what I just said, then don't worry about it. But if you did understand what I just said, then you'll be probably cheering just as much as I am about how game-changing this actually is. In the May release last month, we got support added for calendar events to be used as automation triggers. And in this release, that's been enhanced to allow you to support offsets as well. What this basically means is that last month, you would have been able to trigger an automation when the current time lined up with an event in your calendar. In this release, you can now trigger an automation to run a set time before or after that calendar event. Perhaps you'd like to sound an announcement around your house, telling everyone to hurry up and get ready 15 minutes before you're due to leave the house for grandma's birthday. Or you might want the heating in your home office to turn on 30 minutes before the first work meeting of the day. I've never really thought about it until last week, but this calendar automation trigger is really powerful. You can technically create a separate calendar just for Home Assistant, and use it to trigger all kinds of automations. You could add visitors due to stay over to your calendar and automatically enable guest mode at the right time. You can even create complex automation schedules like on the first day of the month or every third Tuesday, which calendars are really great at calculating, but it's super hard to do in YAML. You could also import public calendars into your home assistant. Some councils publish a public calendar for things like garbage collection, sporting road closures, or public transport maintenance schedules. You can add these calendars to Home Assistant and have it trigger automations or notifications based on this third-party information, and it will automatically get updated when the garbage collection day changes or a new public transport maintenance event is scheduled. In fact, that's a pretty awesome idea for a future home automation video. This pretty much wraps up the main updates from this Home Assistant release, but as always, there are a few minor changes that I'll quickly cover now. The first of those small improvements is to the scene editor, which makes it easier to change an entity as part of a scene rather than the whole device that it's a part of. If you don't use scenes in Home Assistant, then you really should take another look at them. I made an entire video of how and why I use scenes in my smart home, and they're really simple to use, but powerful. I've linked to the video in the description below. There's been more improvements to the Home Assistant database, which will make it faster, use less storage space, and help extend the life of your SD card if you're running it on a Raspberry Pi or similar device. And if you're using video cameras in your Home Assistant setup, you'll find the preload stream tick box has been moved out of the camera feed cards and into the settings of the entity itself. This release also brings with it some new integrations, including one called Big Ass Fans. Or is that Big Ass Fans? You should also always take a look at the breaking changes before you update your Home Assistant. Each release brings with it some changes that might change the way certain devices or integrations work. This could mess up your automation, so I always highly recommend that you check the list first to see if anything you use is mentioned. For example, a few of the sensors have been renamed or removed from the BMW Connected Drive integration. The Sonos integration will have some services removed in a future release as they're redundant so update any automations or script that you have that use those before they're gone. And finally, a ton of these integrations no longer need you to add their OAuth credentials to the configuration.yaml file, as they're now supported by the new OAuth 2 improvements I talked about earlier. These credentials are automatically imported from the YAML file to the UI when you install the update, so you can safely remove them from your config file. That's what's new in Home Assistant 2022.6. What are you looking forward to the most in this version? Let us know in the comments below. If you're a regular viewer, then welcome back and thanks for watching. If you're new here, then why not subscribe to the channel? I regularly release videos about Home Assistant and the specific home automations that I use in my home. You can see a couple of examples on the screen now. Go on, click subscribe, and then together we can make your home smarter.